11 Madison Park, an icon in fine dining. Now entirely plant-based and chef-driven, one of the most legendary restaurants to ever operate in New York City. Number one restaurant in the world in 2017, and now their $335 tasting menu looms ahead of you. It took months to get this reservation, and the wine pairings are attractive, but so is a 212-page wine list. Now, as you and I sit in a set of chairs that allegedly cost upwards of $11,000, let's lay out some ground rules on how we'll approach this wine program. Firstly, we're going to assume that no sommelier is available. The team is currently on an expedition to Tibet to understand the wine region as it develops. We'll also assume that the wine list online is up to date and we'll use a few sample dishes from various news outlets to try to establish the format of this plant-based menu. They do not offer an online copy of their tasting menu, so we will have to assume. Then lastly, we will approach the wine list in the following scenarios. Firstly, we will order only wines by the glass, keeping things high in value and low in overall consumption. Then we'll imagine we've been tasked with ordering a single bottle at $150 or less, and tonight we're out with a client who says they love Camus. Then we'll assume we have $5,000 to spend on three bottles of wine. And lastly, we'll imagine we have infinite money to, infinity. to drink whatever we want, however we want. So it's time to crush some wines by the glass and we start with bubbles. Now, one of the dishes I know starts the meal is some bread with sunflower butter. I'm sure many of your starting dishes are going to be light, fresh, plant-based. So as tempting as it is to start my day with Krug, Pierre Peter's Cuvée de Reserve Blanc de Blanc. We've ordered it by the bottle before, so you know I'm a fan. We're looking for that freshness and minerality from this classic grower producer, and being able to enjoy good champagne by the glass is always an opportunity I like to jump on. Now for white wine, I still want to focus on freshness, but I see an opportunity to drink great white burgundy. Domaine Chano Boulanger's Mes Chevaux Merceau, 2019. It's going to be young and fresh, and I like 19 for Burgundy in general, and Geno Boulanger, a really small family-owned production based in Merceau. This is really one of their signature cuvées. It's going to be a little dense and rich. It's going to stand up to some of the more structured dishes approaching entree, but it's still going to have that nice bright acidity, especially for a young Burgundy. And now for red wine. I'm thinking Syrah. We want something earthy, rich, and dense to stand up to what will likely be heavily driven by more mushroom and beet-focused dishes, and I see Alain Grayot's Cro Hermitage. Now, Grayot is an absolute legend in the Rhone Valley, and he worked with Jacques Seyss at Domaine du Jacques, came down, started a domain, and is making some of the best Syrah on the market today. Whole cluster, practicing organic, family owned, it checks every box I would look for in red wine. I may have splurged a little on white burgundy, but you know me. We've made it out of the by the glass unscathed, so let's go ahead and dive in on ordering a single bottle at $150 or less. So now I have to browse the wine list at 11 Madison Park to even find a bottle of wine under $150, much less one that's going to inspire the styles of Chemis Cabernet Sauvignon. So that means my guest likes high alcohol high oak, lots of fruit, and a touch of sweetness, so I'm going to wander to the New World, and I find Easton Wines out of Amador County, and it's a 1999 Zinfandel. Now, is it going to drink like Camus? Probably not, but I don't really care, because this is going to be red, it's going to be ripe, it's going to show some bottle age, and it's a cool producer all the way around, and how often do you get to drink 20-plus-year-old California Zinfandel? Boom, $120 well spent in my book, and we've got at least one happy scenario so far. For a next, let's approach the wine list with a bit of budget, and let's spend $5,000 on three bottles. We'll start with champagne. I see a beautiful Jacques Salas 2005. I'm pretty sure we've talked about Salas before, one of the most legendary grower producers. Here he is with his father, and immediately I notice he looks a little bit like the guy from The Bear on Hulu. Anyways, Really focusing on terroir, non-intervention, no chemicals, no pesticides. In this, the single vintage comes from two parcels in Avizé and ages about nine years in the bottle before they disgorge. This is really one of the most legendary producers and an opportunity to drink one of his vintage selections is one I will not be passing up today. 
I generally try to avoid wines who are now owned by large conglomerate houses, but in this example, well, they were independent in 1986. This is Chateau de Yquem's Y for our white wine. It's a blend of Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon produced with a little touch of late harvest, particularly back when they were making it at this time coming out of Bordeaux. Yquem is the dessert wine. It's not the most famous dessert wine, it's the dessert wine. All leathers are held against this benchmark and this, their dry style, even with a kiss of sweetness is going to be extraordinary with bottle age. I've had the dessert wine from 86 and I would love to try the dry rendition tonight. Now cue the air horns. It's time to drink some baller burgundy. Baller. This is Domaine Georges Rumier's Clos de la Boussier 1999. Now finding even a current vintage of this wine is a million to one odds and here with 20 plus years of age is going to be an exceptional expression of burgundy. Rumier is really one of my favorite producers working today, ranking right up there alongside Mea Camazé and Dujac. And Clos de la Boussier is their signature cuvee out of Moray saint -Denis. This is going to be an ethereal experience and really what Burgundy is all about, much less high quality wine. And come on now, we came in under budget, but just barely, and this is an exceptional lineup. This is something that would really be a once in a lifetime wine drinking experience, really befitting a restaurant of this reputation. Now let's get in there like swimwear and spend all the money in the world to drink the craziest wines we can at 11 Madison Park. We're of course going to start with Champagne. I see some Salon, a really beautiful vertical here, and the 08 Na Magnum. 08 is an extraordinary vintage, and if I'm not mistaken, Salon only produced the 2008 Mags, and I love Champagne out of Magnums. Now of course we're going to enjoy some white burgundy. I like to highlight Dujac's Montluçon. That's not a wine you see very often, but even more importantly is Comte Georges de Vogue's 1988 Moussini Blanc. Now Moussini is a Grand Cru for red wines, one of the most celebrated. However, there is a single producer making Moussini Blanc and that is Vogue. Now I also want to enjoy a second white burgundy because I can and there is Coche de Ries 2000 Corton Charlemagne. Not just talking about rarity here, that's really its signature producer, an extraordinary vintage for white burgundy, really a once in a lifetime opportunity and a steal at this price point. Speaking of once in a lifetime opportunities, forget Morbin time, it's Dujac time. <laughs> We've got Domaine du Jacques 2005 Clos de la Roche. Again, really a wine that stands above all others in terms of its quality. They say to sell DRC and drink du Jacques, and that's exactly what we're doing tonight. 05 is a great vintage for red burgundy, Clos de la Roche, one of the two signature productions of du Jacques, and that's just enough bottle age to really start to see this big girl show its colors. And for the low, low price of $25,000, you too could enjoy five beautiful bottles of wine. The salon technically counts as two. So roughly the price of a brand new Honda Civic and just a great value all the way around. So thank you so much for joining me here as we dug into the list at 11 Madison Park. Always appreciate you joining me here in Troy's Tasting Room. So join me in the future when we dig into more wine lists and continue to discuss wine every day. Thanks so much.